Right, this is a quick intro to Rhino for Mac. It's uh, literally just a showing you around the package. Um, for those who've already used Rhino on a PC, um, there are quite a few differences. Um, for those who've never used Rhino before and your Mac users, then it's quite different to most other applications that you'd be used to. Um, what I'll do is I will update a little bit later. There we go. We'll start with some familiar territory. That seems fine. Okay, here we go. Right, you can maximize it, like so, on a Mac. Um, if you do so, your dock drops off. Uh, most people have it on the bottom. Um, if you're coming from Windows, um, a few things are obviously very similar. The primary interface is is very familiar um, with your four different views, um, and you can obviously cut customize your views as you need to. Um, what is different is the way the toolbars are laid out, um, some of the options, and hidden behind some of these little icons um, are some of the options you'd normally see in totally different locations. So it is worth just having a quick scan around the edges uh, of your interface to get a bit of an idea of how it's working. If you're running Rhino for Mac on a MacBook, MacBook Pro, what you're going to find is you're going to run out of uh, visual working space quite quickly. So using these um, left and right column toggles, it's going to be pretty helpful. Um, in terms of power, if you're on a MacBook or a MacBook Pro, um, Rhino is actually going to handle handle itself quite well, and it shouldn't cause you too much grief until you get up to a fairly complex model. Um, its demands on graphics are have always been actually very efficient um, so it can be a bit of a break um, for some of the slightly less than desirable graphics cards that are shipped on on MacBooks um, which tend to be better for watching HD video than they are for 3D modeling but anyway let's just uh, let's just get going with a quick introduction to some of the commands um, the basic tools exist obviously from the minute you open the window um, so you've got your curves, you've got your surfaces and your some objects. You've got some of the other things which have co completely different icons um, in Mac as opposed to Windows. Um, so you will start to get used to them. If in doubt, right click on everything just to give yourself a bit more information. Um, and let's just go into to this a little bit. Let's, let's, um, let's do a basic basic shape with some extrusions and some curves. I should point out that I'm using the magic mouse on this and what we're saying to people is there just isn't enough control on the magic mouse to be working in a 3D package like Rhino. So it's worth going out and getting a decent third party three, three button mouse um, and setting it up properly or something like the 3D connection uh, items which we actually sell. Um, they're going to be a lot easier to work with. The the magic mouse there just isn't. It's a nasty mix of hypersensitivity and inaccuracy. Anyway, right. Let's just select a few things here. Let's have a rounded rectangle. Maybe grid snap is fine actually for the time being. We'll just get that going. There we go. Right. I'm struggling a little bit to zoom in because of the mouse I'm using here, but we'll make do for the moment. And what we'll do is, oh, this is another important point. For commands, you just simply start typing and it, uh, it appears up there. 
in development versions of uh, Rhino for Mac, it was vaguely floating over the top, but they've um, they've done away with that, and it now shows in the top left there. Um, same applies uh, as if you were using a Windows version, where you'd simply type in the parameters that you go go with your command, uh, and you'd see them in the command line at the top or bottom if you'd moved it. On this, uh, it appears on the left. So if you were to type in something here, you'll see it appears up there. Likewise, you could take it both sides. And obviously, if you know the shortcuts in terms of commands, uh, they're available to you as well. I'll just escape that for a minute. Okay. Uh, let's go back to my extrude. There we go. And we'll just simply use the, the grid as a reference for the minute. Okay, so now we can see it in our perspective view. I tend to find that's not a fabulous way to work. Oops. Uh, in the sense that just simple lines I find that a little bit difficult. And what we want is our view menu. So let's just come out of here a second. I find ghosted can work because you can still see through. And it gives you a good idea of what's actually a surface and what isn't. Um, so, as I said before, a lot of the commands are identical. So we cap that. There we go. We have we have a cube with four curved corners. Most of the commands are identical to Windows. Um, there are a few lacking. However, you have to be a pretty powerful Rhino user to start missing those, at least initially. Uh, Rhino for Mac at this level is very, very good for concept work, getting going. If you have specialist requirements, such as marine or architecture plugins that you routinely use, then obviously you're going to need to stick with the Windows version for the time being. Or migrate your drawings to Windows at a point uh, in the process. A lot of Mac users might exist in your office who are running various other things more traditionally associated with Mac and suddenly you can you can give them a copy of Rhino and they can be part of the process if not the entire process, uh, a large part of it. Anyway let's just see, let's just try a few more commands here. Now that's probably not the best resolved corner in the world, but it's not bad. In fact, that's pretty clean. It gives you an idea of how quickly you can do things in Rhino that you just simply can't do um, in various other packages um, that maybe Mac users are more used to. Certainly. If you're looking for something that's a bit meatier than something like SketchUp, um, Rhino is fabulous. But this just gives you an intro. Um, what I should do is maybe just go through a few more aspects of specific to Rhino for Mac. Um, let's just pull this out a little bit. What we have is our layers palette here. If I just duplicate it at the moment, because I haven't got anything too interesting going on. So if I open up the object window, Obviously, I can switch it between layers. Um, you can toggle the, the current layer, lock out your layers, and so on and so forth. You effectively have two chunks here which you can be running the same, same or different uh, options in. Um, you've got your views, properties, there's various other bits and bobs here. Viewport settings doesn't necessarily need to be here, but it's quite handy. Um, the main ones you can concern yourself with are the layers, the object, um, and probably.
probably the various snap options once you're actually working into a draw. Right, before we draw a line, let's just check we've got some decent options. Make sure that we can actually grab on. Here we go, it's a bit better. There you go. So if you need to be drawing the line, the option is to where you start your line and what it can connect to are available up here. Um, I think on the PC version they're there at the bottom. I see command history down there, which is actually Maybe useful if you wish to uh, go back over things. Um, but let's, uh, I think that's probably just about concludes a quick intro. Um, all your options obviously are always up here. Um, about 80% of the functionality of a Rhino is in Rhino for Mac. But one significant difference obviously is that at this stage, that plugin support doesn't exist yet. Um, we'll touch on that in another video, but essentially it means that you're working in Rhino, but if you want to do anything else, you've got to take that, that object out. And you've got to take your drawing into something else. Uh, so for the time being, at least, the export options are going to be incredibly important. Um, the good news is that Rhino gives you fabulous export options. So whether you're looking to take it into a renderer, uh, looking to take it into another 3D package, send it to someone else who has another 3D package, um, or maybe take it to 3D printing. All these options are available to you. Right, that's it for now. I'll do more in another video.